Yeah. Right, Lewis, welcome Hi. to Social Cast. Thank you, glad to be here. No problem, no problem. I, I been? I'm alright, man. Not too bad, just, you know, getting by in this lockdown and stuff. Yeah. Trying to stay somewhat productive, I yeah. guess. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a bit tough at the moment, isn't it, with the situation that's going on? Yeah, it's a bit hard to adjust to, I've got to say that, like, I, I had like the first week like I was trying to stay productive and all that and be on top of things and now it's kind of just like you get them days where you're like, oh, can't be bothered, I can just do it tomorrow. Yeah. Are you, as a creative, so we'll just jump straight into it, as a creative, like how how are you coping with the situation right now? It's kind of a mix. Like I have some days like I'm trying to do a few different things. So like how do you stop videos and stuff like that? So I've been trying to shoot a few stops and like different stuff but like might be I guess you could say popular nowadays, like a lot of stuff on obviously the virus um, and just random stuff that might give me some like residual income in the future, like something that I can, I guess, putting it towards something where at the end of it I can say, you know, um, I've done something with my time and actually made it worthwhile rather than just being stuck in doing nothing. Yeah, for um, real. But apart from that, like I've just been, say, work, I've worked, put a bit of time into my showreel, I'm doing that now, but um, that's taking a bit more time than I thought it would. Yeah, but, it always does. Uh, yeah, so I'm putting a bit of time into that, and um, to be fair, there's some days where, like, I guess, like, you just lose motivation and stuff, so it's just being, like, chilling and stuff, and <clears throat> yeah, whatever, so, spending time with family. Like, us creatives always like to get out of those. Like, I hate being stuck in those, but I'm kind of coping with it now, just because I'm keeping occupied with the YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of stuff like that, like, first of all, what, what websites do you use for stock footage? Because I know, like, I know about Black Box. And I've tried it, but they reject a lot of footage. And I, I don't know, like, I know they're quite strict with it all. Um, but even with the footage, I've tried uploading it. I haven't really been, you know, I'm being noisy or anything like that. It's a bit, it's a bit weird. The only, I'm trying to think, I usually just use Blackbox because mm. they distribute it to, like, <laughs> I think there's five companies they distribute to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the only thing I can say is there's, like, a few things where you have to to like I know I've had a few things rejected like it's weird like if you've got anything like I've had some, some clips where I say I've had like a 360 spin or something and I just thought oh it's pretty cool you might you know someone mm. might find it useful and yeah. it's something like you have to have a straight horizon and you can't like have it like doing weird movements to camera and um, yeah. it has to be the only things I know is it has to be over five seconds long um obviously all the basic stuff like a decent half decent grade um no noise and stuff and no audio. Yeah. Um, Do you think that's like so limiting though? Like as a creative, you kind of don't want to upload, you know, static footage or any boring footage. Yeah. And as a creative, you want to kind of show your talents and show diversity. Like, yeah, I what you're saying. I think it is the one thing I say. I, I like, I like the actual business and all that, and like being able to do stock footage and stuff. But yeah, of course. Yeah. I guess. It's more than anything. You've got if you're going to do footage on there, you've got to make footage that can be used for like multi-purpose. Mm. So, I think the best people do the best on there are people that are kind of like doing stuff like I know like there's a lot of people say that are doing stuff like drone footage of um, generic stuff or say uploading a lot of really high quality but generic stuff like it might be some reading a book but it might be really high quality like yeah. lighting on point and you never know like stuff like that. Um, and see real well. You can literally sell though anything. Like I literally I was with my girlfriend um, in the park. I took my camera with me just because I don't I can't remember. I just I thought I'll take it with me. Yeah. And there was a bunch of pigeons on the side of like this little kind of walkway, and I ended up just basically shooting them and um, uploaded it just like not thinking of anything. It's probably the worst clip I've actually got online. I think I've got like a hundred <laughs> clips now. And uh, I got a random email from Blackbox about six weeks later, and it sold for seventy quid. Really. It's just like that, and I was like, "Are you gener are you like generating an income from that then? Like, do you make a decent like a decent whack from black box or? You can. There's people I haven't personally yet because I've only got like I said like a hundred clips online. Mm. Uh, but to be fair, I only had before lockdown. I only had twenty clips online, and I made a hundred quid in sales. That's that's good. That from, um. And they can sell the clips as many times as, you know, as many times as people can buy them, basically. Yeah. But there are people in the group, because uh, there's like a Facebook group of it, and they're making, there's some people that are bringing in like 700 quid a month. Yeah, Usually, nice. like every month. It's nuts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the sounds... best thing is that you can do, there's different areas, so like you can upload clips and have your own stuff, and then 
it's like a process. So once you shot the clips, you have to obviously edit them, mm -hmm. upload them, and then you've got to do uh, what's it called now? Metadata and creation. It's like I guess it's like when you've got YouTube, you've got like keywords and all that, and your titles and everything like that, and you basically have to go through and do all that stuff. But you can pay someone else another member to do that for like 20% cut of whatever your clips make. Yeah. So I mean, there's some people that literally just do that as a job. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a good way to make income though, I guess. I'll just like, it's something that you don't have to worry about once it's done with. Anyway, it's, yeah. just, it's just there and it's just money coming in. That's the thing, like I've had more time now and I just kind of, although say I didn't, I've probably run out of footage to actually like upload at the moment. Or like if I'm creating new stuff, it's for, like I've got footage, but a lot of it I need to, you know, like how it is, like with clients and stuff, you have to ask them first for um, permission and stuff like that. It's awkward. Yeah. Okay. But you can still do like metadata creation. It's boring, but if you've got nothing else to do, you know that in the future you might make twenty percent of a sale. Exactly. Because exactly. there's some people. The one thing is it's a bit weird because you can a clip can sell and you can get a fiver for it, but at the same time that same clip, if it say was to get a commercial license purchase. Um, for like I don't know it might be for a Netflix uh, series or something for yeah. one shot the pre you're probably going to get paid like 700 quid for that same shot yeah exactly I mean no, no it's really you know the, I mean like the, random the value changes of the clip for different reasons so it's definitely a good thing to be on right now especially during quarantine yeah exactly there's it's one of the things where I kind of thought you know I've got nothing else to do I'm even going to sit here and just go on PS4 which is all right, but I mean, if you do it every day, it's just like repetitive. Like, I mean, there's still days where I'm like that. I'm just like, you know what? I really can't be honest doing anything today. Yeah, we all have those days, you know what I mean? Let's yeah. just be real. Like, we all have those days. Mm -hmm. And as a creative, it's not healthy to be always on it 24-7. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, as a business, you've got to be on it 24-7. So say if you're not creating, obviously, you've got to be on top of your social medias. But in terms of actual creating and doing something productive, it doesn't have to be every day. Cause I find when I have a break, that's when the best ideas come and that's when new ideas come and all this, you know, like, it's kind of like taking time out to really figure out what's next and how to step it up a little bit rather than constantly going at it because I feel like you're putting out the same stuff because you don't really have time to think about, oh, I could have done that differently. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah, that is definitely true. Like, the one thing I found as well, like, I was literally... It's funny you say that because I was in a space a few months ago where I was kind of like, I've been working towards getting to a certain like level in my work for ages. And I hit that point and I was kind of like, I was still not happy whatsoever with what I was doing. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I need to step back and take a bit of time off and like literally like drop quite a bit of work, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I basically like, I basically like um, stopped doing a few projects, but I had in basically plan for the future and stuff and I was like you know I need to kind of switch things up and work out what I need and what I want to do and it took me forever to find out you know like where I wasn't happy with or what I wasn't happy yeah. with should I say it's a process yeah exactly um to be fair it's, it's quite funny I was watching I ended up watching I think it was Taylor Swift's documentary yeah, and there was some things she said in it um yeah. and it was so random but it was to do with like her career and it was something she said and it was like um she was doing for a while uh, what was it now? She was doing it for a long time what other people wanted her to do. Mm hmm. But she wasn't doing what she wanted to do. Yeah, something yeah. on lines of like that. Yeah, and, I've, I've watched that I documentary. Just, it's kinda, I was watching it, it was like 3 a.m. and it was just clicked to me. I was like, okay, yeah. And that's the thing, like, like mo moving on to, like, moving forward from this, like, how do you work with your clients? Like, do you have, do you make sure, because as me, me as a creator, I want to have some sort of creative control, if not all. Because I know what's going to work and how to put that business into a limelight in terms of video format. So I know what's going to work with that business because I'll make an idea that works for that business. But a lot of people just want to send a link and say, oh, I can have that footage. Like for me now, I don't work with those type of people. Or if to do that to start with, I'll be like, look, listen, this is how I want to work. Believe in my vision and my craft. That's why you've come to me in the first place. And then... If it doesn't go to plan, fair enough, I'll hold my hands up, but guarantee it's going to do some sort of goodness for your business. But how do you approach clients when they kind of come at you with that, oh, I've already got the idea for it? To be fair, for me, it depends mostly on the project, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Let's like, say if it's, 
what you should do is I'll say to them, like, have you got some ideas? Like, when I go into a project, I always use this. Day, have you got, like, a concept behind what you want it to go for? Like, a yeah. few references of something you like. Yeah, reference and concepts is brilliant, yeah. but not like, I want it like that. Yeah. Yeah, so like I usually say, like, uh, I'll say, so sometimes you get people saying, especially for music videos and stuff, oh, I want to do that exactly. And I'm like, why? Why do you want to do that? It's already been done. Mm -hmm, exactly. And it's just like. And I think it's, it's, as I think it's a good mindset for us creators to have because we always don't want to, we want to stand out and be different. Although we kind of take concepts from different things, I think, oh, yeah, that's cool. But we're never like, I want to be that person. I want to, you always look at it like, that's cool, but how can I make it my own? That's what I do anyway, but I know a lot of creators do that, if not every creator. Um, yeah, I think it's fine to look at something and think, yo, that is really cool, you know what I mean? Like, the, I want to be able to do that. Yeah. But, but <clears throat> as you say, it's like finding a way to make it yours and kind of, I guess, I found that I, at one point, I've got, when I was at the start of like making music videos, I looked at a few people and thought, you know what, I'm going to try to do exactly what they're doing. Yeah. And to be fair, after there were some things where I managed to like almost replicate what they were doing, but then mm -hmm. I'll find it. I got to a point where I was like, I'm not enjoying this. Is because it's what they like doing. It's not what I like doing. Yeah. And I was kind of just going on what was popular. I love that though. Like, and then you kind of figured it out. Like, it's not what I want to do. Yeah, I've... that's kind of like that point I was telling you about the turning point. I was kind of like, you know, I need to start changing things up and like doing, yeah. even if it's a little bit different and not what people are used to. It's what I want to be doing. So. I literally had that last year. So like start of last year for me, I was like, I don't want to be doing the same stuff I've been doing for the past three to four years, however long I've been doing it. Yeah. So like that's when I started to invest in lighting because I really want to work on lighting especially and to make stuff pop. Um, and yeah, it's just all about adapting every year and looking at back on your work and thinking, right, well, that was good, but I could have done this better. Or if I just added this or I think budget's a big thing as well. Um, as us creators right now, we're obviously just on, we're on the upbringing, so we're kind of getting up there, but we're still working on very low budget. So as a creator, how do you feel about low budget stuff? Like I love it in terms of creativity because you've got to work with what you have, but it's also a yeah. bit frustrating because it's like, oh, if I had the budget, I know I'd do something crazy with it. It's always the one that, like you say, it's like, it can be fun. You've got to find new ways of doing stuff and all that. And obviously that is always fun, but there's a lot of stress that goes behind. If you try to prepare for something, you like go a little bit too over the top with it and mm -hmm. something you can't, you know, realistically achieve. And it's knowing where the boundaries of what you can achieve on your budget, really, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, like, for new aspiring freelancers or filmmakers, like, what advice should they keep in mind or what would you, if you was like in a workshop with a bunch of kids that wanted to be a filmmaker, like what would you, what would you, what would your tip be? Cause I've got a few in mind, but I want to hear yours. Well, to be fair, that was literally the place I was in like two years, six, 18 months ago now, something mm -hmm. like I literally, I was meant to be going to uni for the first year, so 18 months ago. And I took a gap year, which turned into this now and I'm still working. Yeah. Um, but I'd say the one thing I've learned bigger than ever, anything is networking is key. Agreed. Like if you if you're gonna and always like if you're working with someone or if you you're going out and you see someone who's, um, it could be any it could be someone who you think is like oh this this person's alright but I don't really need to speak to them much because they're not going to be much interest to me. Yeah. Always network with any everyone. Like I've literally spoke to people in the past where, um, I've been like you know, alright this person's alright I'll speak to them but they're not really gonna help me in any way and then six months down the line I've had an email from their cousin or something telling me they've got a business and stuff like that kind of help them out and it's like you never know who's going to take you where yeah exactly, exactly. It's like I, yeah it's like I've got um, I sent endless emails back like a few years ago to Lionsgate to try and get some work experience with them mm -hmm. and um, I ended up working with them in the end um, good good on you mate and stuff but the funniest thing is that when I went down, I um, ended up staying at a friend's house, a friend's, my friend's dad's house, and found out that um, his uncle was was best friends with the CEO of Landscape as well. Oh wow! But it's like you never know who. That's just that's completely kind of relevant for the situation networking there. But yeah, just to kind of get the idea of you never really know who's connected to who. 
Exactly. So tell me about the Lion Gate situation. Tell me about what happened that night and what happened going there forwards after meeting the CEO. Um, basically, I ended up being at an event with him somehow, somehow or another. I can't remember properly now, but I ended up meeting him at an event, and um, in the end, I spoke to him a little bit about what he'd been doing and kind of if he had any event, any video, not video, sorry, films coming up in the future. And um, it led to me ultimately being on a film set. Um, I think it was Angel Has Fallen. No and, way. Yeah, well, that was pretty crazy. But, um, so how was that being like on set then? Uh, it was different to what I expected anyway, for sure. Like it was, it was quite weird. Like I ended up meeting a few people. Like there's a guy called Lance Reddick. Mm-hmm. Um, he was literally just on set. Like like a few. There was I literally I missed I missed Joe Butler by. I think 10 minutes on set and uh, yeah God. I was literally like probably 10 meters away from a few people there was another person I can't remember which is called now but um, there was another actor there as well which is quite big but I can't remember which is called but I ended up having to escort her to like a security car at one point as well which is quite weird Crazy. Um, that's mad but I've got to say it was probably a lot less fun than I thought it was going to be mm-hmm and um, ultimately led me to being a freelancer as I kind of like, it was, what's the word? It's kind of one of my experiences where it's very slow and you can tell like it'd be a very long process to become someone if you're going through the industry as a runner or something like that. So yeah. in the end, I ended up just kind of like being, you know, I kind of just want to go freelance route and get creating straight away. So as a freelancer, kind of like what, what do you focus on mainly? Like what do you want to really adapt on and be known for? That's a good question. Like, um, it's changed a lot. Like, it started out as, as I said, like in film, um, mm-hmm. and I kind of thought, you know what, I want to be directing films and stuff. Like, I think everyone in the end like decides at the start they want to be doing that. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> once I've been on the set and stuff, I kind of realised you're probably not going to even like even stand the chance in, until you get to like sixty working through the film industry to be like a director or that kind of thing. Um. And then it kind of went into music videos. I've always been really interested in, like, you know, music videos and how they kind of give you, like, an endless creativity. Yeah. So literally, like, you can do anything in a music video. If it works and it goes with the concept of the song and stuff, or, like, the kind of vibe of the song, sorry, you can just get crazy with it. I think um, that's why I like music videos as well, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's experimental, and you can express yourself mm-hmm. a lot through music videos if mm-hmm. the artist allows you to be a bit creative mm-hmm. with it. That's one thing, really. Like, you've got if you've got films, you've got to stick to whatever the script is and all that. Like, obviously, you could the set design and stuff can be interesting or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. it's more if you're doing a music video, like you can literally there's music videos out there that just don't make sense whatsoever, but they somehow go with the vibe of the song. Like, if it's an energetic song, and you want to do something stupidly ridiculous as long as it's energetic. Yeah, exactly. It's as much the song. Yeah. Yeah. I think one one artist that I love. Is Travis Scott like Travis Scott's music videos are something else? Yeah, it's ridiculous. So good. Um, I think one of the people that is definitely like kind of I've always thought like, damn, this guy's crazy is um, Luca Lemonade. If you've seen their channel, like these, he just does like crazy videos are really good as well. Okay, I haven't seen Uh, their videos yet. But yeah, uh, music videos are probably where I kind of most recently wanted to be in but mm-hmm. I'm kind of now really, I think for me like I, I'm really enjoying everything like I've done a few events and stuff um, over the last few years different stuff and I really do enjoy doing for me I just love shooting stuff with energy yeah you know to do energetic edits whether it be like for dance like I've done a lot of stuff with dance and I love like dance events so like I'd love to do like dance videos and stuff like that like in the future yeah, yeah. Um, I'd love to be able to get into commercials like shooting cars and stuff like that. I love that, yeah. Anything like that kind of thing. Just I literally, from what I find, I love being able to make really fast-paced stuff, mm-hmm. dressing and show it in all. You know what I mean? Like it's in a right way. So, what's your inspirations? And like, also, well, what's your inspirations? And then the second question is, what kind of like filmmaker or what kind of freelancer do you want to be in terms of? All right. Well, I know that that's a Lewis Jones um, oh, yeah. video. You know what I mean. So, like, if you watch Daniel, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Shifoff, whatever you call him. Um, yeah. When you watch his videos, you know it's him. Yeah. 
So like what? Is it? Yeah, yeah Shifra, that's it. Not Shifra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I'm, I kind of, I think for me, I really like a simple look. But mm-hmm. I like to make things that simple look cinematic as, as like as kind of like different as possible. So like for me, I kind of at the moment I'm putting a lot of my energy into learning lighting mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and which I've only been doing for like around about a year now. Yeah, it was only been a year since I've literally owned lights. That's um, mad because your lighting skills is <laughs> out of this world, mate. For your age as well, nuts. Yeah, but um, yeah, like I think for me it's more like I really like. My favorite that kind of work when I've seen it is stuff where the color grade is really poppy and looks awesome, and the lighting's on point, and yeah. the visuals are simple, but they're really good at portraying the message. Or like you can literally like you know one of the things where I, I want to be a director or like um, a creative where you don't really have to have all the visual effects and stuff on top, and you can literally just the raw footage could be good enough. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. So what kind of inspired you to do? lighting because i know lighting is one of your main things and you love to do lighting yeah what made you really think right well i really want to focus on lighting because it's something that's really important towards me or what what triggered you to really grab onto that well i think for me when i first started out i literally didn't have any interest in lighting all that because i kind of just thought it's one of the things where you watch all these youtubers and you'd hear lighting is key lighting is this Mm -hmm. is that everywhere and i kind of just never really clicked with it and it was like I kind of just I heard it. I was like, yeah, but I mean, if I get this lens, then it's going to be the same anyway. <laughs> so, for the first like year or two, I was kind of like, you know, I need to get this lens. I need to get this new camera and all that, 120 fps, all that. And I was kind of like in that kind of mindset where I thought, well, if I get a better camera, I'm going to be better. If I get this, I'm going to be better and all that. Yeah. Whereas obviously, you need to be actually hitting the basis of light and everything. Um, but. I think the, the main turning point for me was when I watched a YouTube video and I think it was some big DP who'd worked on quite a few Hollywood films or something. It was basically like a, break, a basic breakdown of lighting and basically showed a before and after of like a really simple setup. And the before looked pretty similar to something that I'd been work like shot or like I'd been doing to my kind of stand there. Oh, yeah. it's all right as it is. And then he literally, he just like put I think four or five lights up and he just transformed the whole room and I was just like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was like, to learn lighting now, this is something I really need to get on to. 110%. And in terms of education, did you learn that in education or is it something that you've just learned over time and online? More than anything, I literally, I haven't learned, basically, like, literally, college taught me barely anything. I think for me, um, education-wise, I guess being in education for me was more than anything, just like, an opportunity to not have to worry about making money and kind of give me a chance to be creative and learn myself but most of what I've learned has just been from YouTube or um, watching films and kind of like once I, especially with lighting this year yeah. I a lot of the stuff I've learned I kind of like tried to replicate has been from watching some music videos or films and pause, like stopping it being watching Netflix pausing it and saying you know what that shit looks awesome I wonder what they've done to like mm-hmm aim it like that or kind of do that lighting and just kind of mess around with it or looked online and seen off just you know going on instagram typing in i don't know let's say i know um narcos blah 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 breakdown bts or something just yeah. looking at how they've lit certain scenes and trying to replicate that and it literally like you can learn in some ways but mostly online to be honest yeah i mean there's a youtube channel called indie mobile that's really good at that sort of stuff and they break down a lot of different things with a lot of directors and a lot of Hollywood um, filmmakers. Um, so I think I just want to wrap it up quite soon, to be honest. I don't want it yeah. to like, drag it out as long as we did last time. Yeah. I forgot what we was on about, though, to be fair. Oh, yeah. So what inspired you to do media as a whole? Like, What inspired you to pick up a camera and start shooting? Um, It's quite an interesting story, really. I, I started out with being creative on anything in I, um, back when I was like 12, 13, I was a graphic designer. As a lot of my friends were all getting Photoshop in school, being in game and all that, like when mm-hmm. it was college, you clans and all this kind of stuff. Then, and I kind of knew I wanted to be in some creative, but I didn't know video directly or anything. I was never really directly interested in video. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I knew how to edit a little bit, but I wasn't really like anything. You know, like a, it was more just like little Call of Duty edits and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But then once it got to sixth form, I was like, all right, I'm doing media. I need to pick up a camera. And originally, I was going to get like a small 300 pound camera or something like just a whatever. And I, I literally, I kept going online. I was like, actually, you know, if I spend 50 pound, I can get this upgrade or get this, etc. Like for slow mo or this kind of stuff. In the end, I was spending a grand. And um, yeah, so I had this camera and I was like, oh, okay. So I just spent a grand. I don't know how to use it. I was like, I better make this worthwhile. And yeah. I started, I basically, I just like, as you do when you first start, you learn so many different things about all you've got. Time lapses, hyper lapses, you've yeah. got on the photography side, you've got, um, what is it? Um, long exposures, that kind of stuff. And I just kind of like went from there. There's yeah. so many different layers into it. So it just 100%. kind of kept learning. And well, I think that's the best thing about this industry. I always tell people, like, everyone's always like, Oh well, what's the best advice you can give? For me, I always tell people just go out and shoot and learn. Yeah. Like that's the best way of doing it. Obviously, watch YouTube videos and read books and gather the information. But I think that's one thing I realized in college and uni. Like with uni, I really didn't need it at all. But I had all this information coming through, and a lot of people on the course weren't putting it into practice. Yeah. But I'm a, I like to put stuff in practice anyway, so when I was getting this information, I wanted to see how this information was put into yeah. practice and see, like, oh, yeah, so that makes sense now. You know what yeah. I mean? So I wanted to put two and two together for it to make sense. I wanted to learn. That's um, one where I think I had a similar kind of experience. I was I went on a while, like, literally, it was probably about six months before we were doing our, like, uni applications. I think it was Easter in year 13 or something. I ended up going on a BFI, like, uh, film course or something on it's like the british film institute or something mm -hmm. they were all people that were going to be in film in uni as well and they're all year 13 students <clears throat> and i wrote up this massive form if it's going to be something big and all that helped me <clears throat> get into uni and um i ended up going to the course and when i was there like half the people they did they had no knowledge of film whatsoever and they're all just saying oh, i want to do filmmaking but for me, it was like they literally hadn't put any work in before to really. Mm -hmm. There was maybe two or three people that actually had done anything in the past. I kind of thought, those, am I going to be going for the first two years and just having people catch up to everything I've yeah. learned in the last year? Those type of people expect things like minimal effort, high expectations. Yeah. So it's kind of like they'll get the degree and they'll think, oh, yeah, filmmakers are going to come towards me. Or that's <laughs> going to be enough. But no, you, to be honest, you need a show reel. You need work to prove. Yeah. That over everything, like they don't care about yeah. a degree really and truly in filmmaking. They care one if you can drive because they need you to get to A to B, and two, but, well, <laughs> you'll get there soon. You'll get there soon. Um, and then two is to have a show real show that you've actually been out in the field and you're getting stuff done. Um, yeah, I definitely. Think, I think if there's anything I can say to people that are watching this and like the new or they're trying to get into it, just literally shoot anything like when I first started I was literally I went to my barber and I said do you want me to shoot your video mm -hmm. I, I literally I pulled up with my camera and I was like two hours later I shot a video yeah. and he gave me like 10 free haircuts so it was worth it in the end but exactly and that's just that kind of thing and building a portfolio of the most random stuff on country advertising I was a video videographer and all of this yeah and you can you can yeah. get work and like learn even if you're not even if you don't know stuff try it out like, I literally, 100%. there was a company, a food company that came to me and they said, like, oh, can you do food photography? And uh, I'd never <laughs> even, I didn't even know how to lie. I didn't know anything. I just said, yeah, yeah. sure. I was I ended up shooting it the following day and I was sat in the study room watching uh, photography and tutorials on how to, like, shoot food. But that's how we and, do things, you know what I mean? We learn and we adapt. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, you just need to keep pushing stuff. And the only thing you really need to do is, you, the one thing that I'd say would be useful is just knowing the different areas. So the main thing that I think you really need to learn is obviously your main exposures and all that. So you've got shutter speed, yeah. ISO, um, and aperture. And then once you've done that, composition, um, lighting, well, so the sound design, sound. Is yeah. I'd say like you probably need to get all of everything else first. 